Good afternoon you wee bastards and welcome back to another War Thunder video with Koala. So today I want to discuss Gaijin's recent pushing out of new penetration statistics for APFSDS shells. Actually as I type up the script for this video the server has just gone down for maintenance while the new patch comes in. Pity I was midway through a match but uh... <sighs> so, Gaijin has used several sources to give a whole bunch of armor-piercing shells new penetration values, and a lot has changed. It's likely that in the near future some battle ratings will have to be changed around given these new values, but I'm sure we can work that out at a later time. For now, I want to discuss a fairly big problem at hand. Now, I'm not going to touch at all on the solid shot AP changes. All I want to say about lower tier shells is that one of the only ones I actually know to be false, the British L1A2's 120mm APDS, is one of the few shells that has now been fixed. It's still missing in the neighbourhood of 100mm of penetration. But why fix anything British, right? The Conqueror, with this much penetration and the buff to its reload that Gaijin said was coming last patch and then just conveniently forgot about, would make that tank a viable 7.7 .7 easily, while the Conway also also getting the decreased reload could be moved up to 7.3, but nope, that's not what's happened, at least not yet. A lot of low tier shells such as those on the 17 pounders are getting buffed though, I should say that, and Gaijin states that APDS might be worked out at a later date, so all hope isn't lost for Britain, as well as a lot of shells for all nations being moved around in their penetration values, but in this video I want to focus on the changes specifically to APFSDS shells at top tier. First up, I want to say this in Gaijin's favour. Raise your hand if you've ever said, Gaijin should fix stuff instead of adding new vehicles every patch. Well, here you go. However, no big change is ever without its own issues and faults, and this one is no different. So, for the sake of constructive argument and hopefully helping make this change as positive as possible, we're going to point out the issues, just know that I do this with the best intentions and not to spread hate. So, the Abrams. I'm sure this is where Gaijin's getting most of their backlash from. Yes, the Abrams has gone through a supposedly massive nerf, with its M774 shell being brought down from 415mm flat penetration to a whopping 357mm, even less than the preceding M735. Does that mean that it's actually worse than M735? Well, for use in game, yes, but that's because of shell cost. No point spending 900 lions for a shell that has less flat pen and just a bit of advantage in angle pen. But in actual performance, M774 will still be superior due to its greater performance against angled armor and against composite armor. The RHA penetration might be less, but you'll find it still does you well if you still want to use it and tank the massive hemorrhage to your silver lion bank account. If the post penetration effects of depleted uranium were modeled in game, then I'd say yes, use the M774 till your fingers develop arthritis from clicking on every tank you see, but until such a time, stick with the free shell. This is actually, in my opinion, the best change of the lot, because the M774 shell is now historically accurate, besides that we snafu about its post-penetration acting like a regular old tungsten rod. Now this isn't as much of a nerf as you free abuse might worry it is, because even with the old M774, you still most frequently have to aim for the same weak spots that you could penetrate with M735 anyway, and I hear a lot of players saying that they've been sticking with the free shell already. Armor is not the meta of top tier, and that's not about to change, but that's something we'll talk more in depth about later on in this video. With the Abrams now having only 360mm max flat penetration, I feel like the M774 shell should be made its stock shell and M833 being given to it as a tier 4 modification. I know, I know, another free abuse saying Abrams not OP, please give M833. Seriously though, I've covered this enough times already but I'll say it again, M833 has less than 400mm flat penetration. That's less than M774 has had up until now. But it gains a bit bit of angled penetration capability over M774, really it's still only on par with something like the M13 for the Leopard 2K, and lesser than it against flat armour. It's more historically appropriate to the tank, and I think it should come to both the M1 Abrams and the IPM1. These two shells could also come to the M60A1 Rise P, which still sits at 9.0 despite being noticeably worse than the premium T55 AM1 or Leopard L44. Give it M774 at least, and maybe even M833, and you can leave it at 9.0 easily. It'll be balanced there, and might get played out just enough to help eradicate the Abrams spam even more. If not, then for the love of god down tier the bastard to 8.7 where it has a slight chance of surviving and pulling its own weight. Something else I've spoken about before but I'll say again here for all of you who didn't see that video which will be on screen if you want to go check it out but with the M1 getting the M774 stock and M833 spaded at a later date say when we have 10.3 to 10.7 tanks in the game you could give the IP M1 M833 stock and make M900 the tier 4 upgrade shell. 
M900 performs almost on par with the M33, but once again, I've covered this in the past and will do again when we come to that long-awaited video talking about future tanks at top tier. I have started working on that, by the way. Finally. So that... That's the end of the good changes in my opinion, at least where thin shells are concerned. Now let's get on with the negatives I have to point out. The Leopard 2A4's DM23 is being nerfed from 433mm flat penetration down to 410 Gaijin, why? This shell was already known to be missing penetration, it should have more in the neighbourhood of 450mm flat pen, but not only is it not being fixed, it's being nerfed more? Now lower than the preceding DM13? What is going on up there at Gaijin HQ? As if that wasn't enough, but the JM33, which was another shell already missing penetration, is also being nerfed down to a whopping 481mm flat penetration. What? DM33, or JM33, is one of the few top tier shells we have that is actually fully documented under reliable sources, and it has 530mm flat penetration at point blank range. We know this because of the Swedish tank trials in 1991, it's well founded information that we know to be accurate because of cross referencing with other credible sources, and while in War Thunder it was accurately performing in flat penetration, actually sorry it was overperforming by 10mm, it was missing a massive chunk of angled penetration, and that is not being fixed while the flat penetration is being nerfed by a whopping 60mm. The AMX40's OFL120G1 shell is being nerfed to 488mm penetration, so it is now the best kinetic shell of the game. This is one of the shells that I'm not 100% sure of. Its penetration was correct, or is now correct. It may be the case that this has been nerfed down to historical performance, or like DM33, that it was already correct and is being nerfed unhistorically. Either way, it's losing just over 10mm of penetration, so it's not a big difference. The 105mm DM23, also shared by the British shot Cal Dalet as M111 is being nerfed unhistorically by about 50mm, and the 105mm DM33 on the B110 Toro BR9.3 is being nerfed unhistorically by 40 The British L23A1 ABF Estea shell is being nerfed down from 415mm to 396 which I believe is unhistorical. I'm fairly sure this shell was accurately performing already. I'm 99% sure, and I know why Gaijin's mucked up here. There's a special tip to this specific shell, which increases its penetration a little against different armour types, and the Lance Automat equation which Gaijin is using for these references will not be able to take that into account. There's also values given for the Russian 3BM4 and 3BM9 APF Estea shells, which is interesting as these values use the Lance Automat equation and these Russian APF Estea shells aren't long roads. Lance Odomat only works with long rods, so I've no idea what Gaijin's smoking with this, but 3BM4 is going down slightly while 3BM9 is going up slightly, and I'm not sure whether this is historical or not, so I'm not going to say. Once again though, not long rods. Why are you using the long rod calculator to deal with shells that aren't long rods? So all the shells are being unhistorically altered. Gaijin's mocked up some inputs into the Lanzo automatic equation. They're using some incorrect measurements as far as frustums go, that's the tip of the rod of a long rod ABFSTA shell. They're ignoring certain factors that need to be put into the calculator in order to get the right results. They've basically neglected one small section of the calculator and are therefore getting skewed results. I don't know why this wasn't found out considering that Gaijin has already studied heavily the data on some of these shells in the past, like the M33, but basically they've neglected small bits of the the calculation that end up making big differences to the final value. Certainly forgivable if it's only a mistake, but something that definitely needs to be fixed pronto. Now I'm sure a bunch of you have already typed in the comments, oh you just want every tank to be able to penetrate every other tank and what about armor meta, that's why Gaijin's done this, gameplay first and historical accuracy second, so that we might get an armor meta back at top tier. Well if this were the case I would be all for it. Actually, I might not be all for it, sacrificing realism, creating complete fantasy values just for the sake of improving gameplay, and that's because I have a personal bias towards realism. I love the little historically accurate touches of War Thunder, I mentioned this in my M46 video, I love the access to a historically accurate lineup, the Korean War setup, I love the accurate modelling of tanks, the visual modelling, the historically accurate values, that's my personal interest in the game, whereas a lot of players don't quite care as much about the realism and focus on gameplay first. That's completely up to personal preference, I'm not arguing with anyone who would want to say gameplay should come first. I don't want historical matchmaking or anything, with Tiger 2s fighting M4 Shermans or the AMX-30 and M60A1 both fighting at the same tier as the T-64, M1 Abrams and Leopard 2A4s fighting together against T-55s, no thanks, that's not balanced. But for individual vehicles, I personally lean towards making each vehicle as realistic as is feasible and then balancing them up against each other accordingly. I 
also don't think that we should get rid of prototypes, say, or have the tigers break down all the time or what have you. 100% realism isn't it good, but maybe 85% realism? Like I said, each specific individual vehicle should be modelled accurately and then balanced up against counterparts. The thing is though, this isn't a case of Gaijin saying, okay, never mind realism, gameplay functionality first and changing up the game. Gaijin actually states in the dev blog that this will allow us to achieve no less realism and that historical accuracy will always remain one of the key features of our game. Basically, Gaijin's trying to impart that these changes are realistic and that the level of accuracy in the game is going up and not down. This is my big problem. Gaijin, if you want to alter values unhistorically for the sake of game balance, creating an armor meta, then that's fine. Well, as I said a minute ago, I personally wouldn't enjoy that as much, but at the very least, Gaijin should come clean about it. Admit that these changes aren't based on historically accurate information and just say it's not realistic, but it's for game balance. And I think most people will be okay with that. The thing is, that wouldn't work anyway. See, the main defense of unhistorical nerfing of shells that I've seen is that, well, it might bring back armor meta to top tier. I really don't think it will. And here's what I wanted to talk about earlier. See, the reason there's no armor meta at top tier isn't because all tanks can penetrate all others everywhere. They actually often can't. It's because the weak spots are too weak. The Abrams can't penetrate the Leopard 2's turret cheeks, the Leopard 2 can't pen the Abrams turret cheeks, at least the IPs, and can't pen the M1s from any more than about 300 meters away. The T64B and T80B can't pen the Leo or Abrams from any more than about 800 meters to a kilometer away, and the Challenger can't penetrate them either. The Abrams can't penetrate the T64B or T80B's hulls or turrets, and the Leopard 2A4 can just penetrate the T64B hull from close range, but can't pen the turrets. And only three tanks in the game can penetrate the Challenger's turret cheeks. The AMX-40 and Type-90 are the only two tanks that can really lol pin everyone everywhere, along with the B-1 Centauro with its 105mm DM-33, which is basically identical to 120mm DM-23 in performance at around 450mm flat penetration point blank. The thing is, you never have to penetrate the enemy tank's strongest points of armour. You just shoot for their blindingly obvious weak spots lower plate or driver port of the T-64B or T-80B, gun mantlet of the Leopard 2, Abrams, Type 90 or Challenger, the AMX-40 is the only one without composite armour. The Challenger's hull is a weak point, the Abrams turret ring, the T-64 or T-80B have the gun breach weak point, although admittedly it's very small and a tough target to hit from range, the sides of all these tanks have no armour either, and all of these weak spots are so weak that even after this nerf to penetration, they're still all penetrable by everyone else at that tier. Admittedly, pretty much all of these weak spots are difficult to hit accurately from very long ranges, but the thing is, and I've mentioned this many times before, we don't get much long range combat in War Thunder. Abrams and Leopard 2s engage T-80Bs from no further away than a Sherman would engage a Tiger. This isn't accurate, and this is what takes away armor meta from the game. These guns are way too accurate to be firing on each other from 500 meters away, even from a kilometer and a half away you can accurately aim at these weak spots. The problem is one I brought up in my helicopters video a while back, another one I'll refer you lads to if you want a more in-depth description of the issue. All the capture points we have to fight over are centrally located on the map, meaning that all players are forced into close quarters engagements at some point. We still see really small maps at top tier, at least small for these kinds of main battle tanks, and the capture points funnel us into these smallest possible parts of those maps. Hence, you're pretty much always guaranteed an accurate shot at your opponent's weak spot. It's really not hard to hit a leopard's gun mantlet when you're fighting on an urban map like Poland or Berlin. Once again, I'll refer you to the video I made on helicopters if you want to know more about how I propose we encourage combat from realistic ranges for these tanks. Three to four kilometers away is what would be considered a long range for a Challenger or Leopard 2, and this is what would bring an armor meta back into top tier, not on historical nerfing of shells. This by itself doesn't affix anything. You only need about 300mm penetration to be able to penetrate everybody's frontal weak spots, that's why the automatic is considered so overpowered. And as I said, these guns are accurate enough that in our current game, that's almost always easy. Even the longest shots you make in this game barely reach 2 kilometers, and at those ranges, you can still guarantee hitting the tank you're aiming at if you're aiming accurately at him. Perhaps these guns should actually be made less accurate, with more dispersion at long ranges. This would seem like a bit of an RNG mechanic, but I think decreasing the accuracy of all the guns equally means that shells are likely to hit the thickest parts of an enemy tank's armor, which gives us armor meta back. At the very least, it wouldn't be a case of slam the first shot directly into the enemy's breach and then work shit out from there. 
This is, in my opinion, a much better way to address gameplay problems than unhistorical nerfing of APFSTS shells, and I hope you lads agree. Long range combat, slightly, and I mean slightly less accurate guns, and historically performing ammunition. Once again though, Gaijin doesn't say that this is for balance purposes over realism, they do state that it is for realism, which is provably false. I hope that these changes to shells that are not realistic can be reversed very soon, but of course that's just my opinion. Please let me know your own in the comment section down below. I'm sure that this is just a mistake on Gaijin's part and they have finally fixed M774, credit where credit is due, so this is not meant to be an attack on Gaijin, just pointing out the mistakes with the intent of helping them to be fixed, which is, after all, what criticism is for. In Anyway lads, that's going to do us for this video, I hope you have enjoyed and that you leave a like if you did as it really helps me out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit that bell icon, join the 360 squad and come join the discord at the link in the description below. Remember to come follow me on social media, I actually have a special Twitch livestream coming up which I'm going to announce properly hopefully tomorrow and remember to come check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel further, I really appreciate it. Until next time lads, always remember, keep your bagpipes to hand, keep your kilt firmly on and I shall see you next video. I say a wee thank you to these lads for supporting me on Patreon. DA261, Blabvian Wolf, Geesley Gadarsen, and Dark Recon, you lads are bro. If you wish to join them, come check out the link in the description below.